Hi, Darla. This is Tony. We're doing uh, taking a look at your landscape shots for a critique. So, uh, taking a look here. Let's take a look at the, sort of the the whole the whole batch of them here. Okay, nice variety of looks like riverscapes and some out in the woods there. That's good. Okay, we'll take a look here. Okay, um, first shot, my first impression, uh, one, in terms of composition, you mean this is, and, and it's certainly nothing that's uh, against, you know, um, in terms of, of what you're doing, uh, this is something that you might want to consider um, what you've, and this is something everybody does, <laughs> Uh, you split the picture right down the middle with uh, half sky and half landscape. And so sometimes what you might want to do just to change it up a little bit is have a little less sky, a little bit more landscape, or a little more sky and a little less landscape, just to kind of give it the, uh, a, a little dynamic tension. Um, and because um, there are some, certainly some things here, you know, as I'm looking at this picture, love this sky, love all those clouds and everything. Maybe you'd like to see a little bit more, you know, and, certain, and since you're using kind of a wide angle lens here, um, you know, it uh, can focus more on those things instead of um, having this kind of um, split right down the middle. Another thing here is you're shooting at ISO 100, which is perfect. Um, and you've got, you know, when you're shooting landscapes, you might want to shoot, this looks like you were shooting maybe a wide open um, at uh, 3.5 because you certainly have plenty of uh, room in terms of um, shutter speed so if you shot with something like maybe around f8 f11 then your shutter speed would be down around oh, 125th of a second 60th of a second something like that and uh, that would certainly give you that aperture you know when you're shooting um, at those smaller apertures even though it's a higher number those smaller apertures will give you a little bit more depth of field. And, and, you know, when you're shooting a subject like this, you already have a lot of depth of field. But it's one of those things where if you were, um, you know, in a clo with a closer subject, it could give you a greater range of depth of field. So um, anyway, but for, what, for the shot right here, this is fine, you know, in terms of what you've done. Um, and I guess this next shot, oh, so it must, maybe you did the exposure compensation thing here. Let's see. Uh, it doesn't tell me whether um, whether you use exposure compensation on there or not. So I'm I was assuming that maybe that those two shots were your exposure compensation right there. Oh yeah, because it certainly looks brighter there. Okay, good. I'm glad that you were able to use that because um, you can definitely see there was a little bit of a difference. And uh, if you adjust it even more, you'll notice um, even more. Okay, so uh, this is nice. Now here is a little bit more sky, a little bit less landscape. That's good. A little bit better compensation, uh, composition. And I love that uh, you kind of break up the sky a little bit with these uh, these tree branches here. So that's good. And you got a nice long telephoto shot of a looks like a stranded barge or a sunken barge. Um, that's pretty interesting. Uh, same kind of thing here too. Maybe, you know, you could get away with, so you're kind of splitting your picture right down here in terms of composition. Uh, if you'd cropped it right here, um, maybe it would focus a little bit more uh, in terms of the composition on the uh, the fact that the barge is sinking or whatever, too. So, um, yeah, kind of an interesting landscape. You know, same kind of thing here, too. Um, uh, let's see, perhaps maybe a vertical shot too. Let's see if you got anything like a vertical shot. Okay, good that you're moving, uh, you know, in terms of having the subject placement, um, you're moving it over to the right a little bit better over there. Um, and, and that fact that, you know, it's almost, in the, if you've ever heard of this rule of thirds, where uh, if you split a picture into three different um, segments and you go um, up and down and, and crossways, where the intersection points are, which would be like here, 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 and here, uh, this roughly fits close to that one of those intersection points in terms of pleasing compositional elements. Ah, this fits much better.
Uh, and if you have any ways of darkening your images or whatever, you know, like in Photoshop or something, always, you know, bringing down the sky. This is nice that this is uh, not totally white here, and so your eye stays within here. So that that worked out just fine. Good. And your ISO is 400. That's perfect for kind of a cloudy day like this. Now you bumped your ISO up to 800 here. That's good. Maybe you're experimenting a little bit here with this. You can see a little shift in color. Ah, good. So you have some vertical shots here, too. That's good. Okay, now same kind of thing here, too. Let's see, your aperture at 3.5, pretty much wide open. Uh, when you're in a closer spot right here, your subject a little bit closer, you might want to give yourself a little bit more wiggle room in terms of having a depth of field. So, um, you know, and you can see right here... Okay, let's see, use a little bit longer telephoto. And uh, now in a case like this, you could, uh, well, you can see where this is sharp, and then your depth of field allows these to go softer back here. Now, that, this actually kind of works really nice because the, your eye goes right to that uh, sharper element, and then uh, the softer elements reinforce that sharper element. Okay, so that that turned out fine. Um same thing right here. This is this is a nice shot. Now you can see down here in your foreground that uh, this is out of focus, and that's not this bad. But uh, if you had shot this ISO at say, for instance, 400 or 800, and you had used this aperture, set this aperture at um, 11 or so. Uh, this, along with this out here, because of the greater range of depth of field, would be in focus. So uh, just these little tips, you know, especially when you're working with landscape, that, that can um, make things um, oh, a little bit more dynamic in your pictures. So, uh, and, and if you wanted to have the control over that, that's one way to do it. Okay, I, I like the fact that this is kind of tilted like this, and I also like a little bit, the, the, this one uh, is a little bit more telephoto, and it has a little bit shallower depth of field out here because it really focuses your eye on these, um, these stones here. So um, that actually works with a, a shallower depth of field, and f3.5 right here, that, that, that does just fine. I uh, like this shot a lot. This is very nice. Um, like the fact that the uh, this definitely reinforces the softer elements out here reinforce the sharper elements of the tree, and I like the fact that you uh, you know zoomed in on a detail of something that was out in the landscape too. So good, good job. Same thing with this one. Um, those those little uh, mushrooms. That's really nice little elements in the moss. Um, to be focused on, and then you also have these softer elements of these, even this tree in the foreground here, so uh, very effective. Um, and this shot right here, this is, I like this a lot. You could probably have tilted this a little bit, and you know, it's one of those things in a picture where the brighter parts of the picture tend to, to uh, attract your eye. If you have uh, access to Photoshop or something like that, you might want to uh, burn the edges on, you know, on future things. You don't have to do it on this picture right here. This, I mean, this is a very nice shot, you know, in terms of uh, the roots of this tree. But just in, in for the future, uh, to consider to keep your eye in right here. Either that or maybe crop off uh, the brighter parts of the sky so that you're actually looking at... Uh, you know, uh, something of the uh, elements of the tree here. This is very nice. I like this. You know, same kind of thing here, too. Your eye kind of goes right to that part, right there, the really bright part. If you could burn that down, if you're do using something like in Photoshop, or just crop it off and keep your, um, you know, what you're looking at right in here. That's good. Uh, I like this. like this a lot. This is... Um, like the fact that you can see the softer elements, you know, with the shallower depth of field, the softer elements of the tree up there, and your eyes not quite drawn off the uh, edge of the page because you know the uh, el the tree takes up the commanding spot, you know, and it's not as bright as you know this area of sharpness down here. So that works well, um, and the same kind of thing here too. Um, 
this shallow depth of field can work for you, as can, you know, if you were using um, the uh, stopping it down to, you know, an aperture of maybe, you know, 11 or 16, to where you're actually getting more depth of field, too. So, uh, just a little something to think about. But in this case right here, it is, it, is, it is effective, you know, in terms of being able to see these little sharper details right here. So, um, love the fact you kept your ISOs down low, except for a couple times when you were experimenting shooting pictures with the barge and you bumped it up to 800. So, uh, that worked well. And the fact that, uh, you know, you were using some um, depth of field elements to uh, enhance the, uh, the, I guess, the, the focus in your picture. Uh, but also consider stopping your aperture down and getting uh, more depth of field in some other, um, in some of those other images that we that uh, we were looking at earlier. So, uh, good job, Darla, and um, thanks very much.